And we are back. This is DJ Nightwind, and you are tuned to the Rock Asylum. .com. We have Murnane Tribe all the way from Columbus, Ohio, the heart of the Midwest. Welcome back, mm. fellas. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, you know, listening to your music is, uh, it, it brings back to the old school days. Uh, it's not your typical power trio band. I was going to ask you, fellas. Uh, Tony, uh, as a songwriter, um, tell us how you, how, how you guys do it. Well, you know, and you say we're not the typical power trio band, and I don't think we're the typical anything. You know, we just try and be our own thing, and we write what we right. write. And, uh, you know, just, you know, a lot of the lyrics are, are coming out, and, you know, we pick and choose. I've got a whole folder full of them, and, you know, Mike comes up with some guitar riff, and Sean puts a drum beat behind it, and I'm like, hang on, hang on, let me look, let me leaf through my lyrics, and, you know, we just kind of, to write, that's the way we kind of write, you know, it's all together. It's, it's now, let me, ask, let me ask you a question, let me ask you a question, do, do the songs have real life meaning to them to you guys, or are they just fiction? They, some um, of them do, some of them don't. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, uh, actually it's funny because, you know, we, we have a song called My Stripper Girlfriend. Right, and that actually I remember came out. that. Yeah, uh, uh, that actually came out. A friend of mine told me that uh, my stuff that I was writing at the time, lyrically, was just too dark and too depressing. And I'm like, fine, I'll write about something fun. How about strippers? <laughs> so I wrote that song. And, yeah. uh, it just, it I, just remember kinda, that. I remember that. I remember, I, remember I remember you screaming at uh, yeah. On stage, and nobody nobody reacted, and then uh, you had to scream it again. Then you got the then you got yeah. the crowd's attention. That yeah. was, that's well, a good and, song. Uh, and you know, and you talk, we just we just heard out, but not down. And that's kind of a uh, that one actually comes more from the heart about uh, just some of the struggles we've we've all had, you know, as you know, in our personal lives and for the band right. and everything. So that that's kind of where that one came from. So yeah. it's 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 both kind of real life experiences and some fun stuff, all thrown in together. Well, you know that, and that's part of the even that's part of the non music diversity of it. You guys mix it up so well. Your progressive style, Mike on guitar, wicked wicked guitar solos, and then right. you tune it, and then you tune it down to an acoustic uh, a solo, and you know it just pulls you right into the music. And uh, it's just great listening to it. I know it pulls me right in. Um, let's turn this over to Beth. Um, Beth Wise, uh, welcome. Thank um, you. Uh, do you want to tell us how you met up with these guys? Well, I used to be married to Mr. Mernan. And uh, we got a divorce, but now we're working together. I'm his assistant. And um, he, he, when he put the band together, that's when I met the guys. And uh, we've been having a great time ever since. You know, Mike, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to um, interrupt here. Mike, he told me this, and I, it, it just dawned on me that he told me this. I'm sorry. I put, I've been pronouncing your band name all wrong. It's Mernan. It's not Mernan. The E is silent. Right. So, right. Uh, I'm that's okay. A lot of people do that, but that's all right. I apologize for that, and I do. You told me that you were once married to Beth, and I apologize for not remembering that. Also, um, so Beth, you've been writing poems. Is that part of? Uh, I mean, you like to write. Uh, how did you were writing something, and you were approached by other bands also? Uh, no, I never did submit my songs to to anyone else. Um, I just, I still have them. I kept them all these years. I wrote it back in 1977, Whistler's Hall. And um, it's a, it's a, they, they put some music around it and it was awesome. That's great. That's just great. Um, that's just awesome. Um, do you still do any writing for the band? Uh, no, I mean, we, with what we got going on with this fourth album, to give you the truth, we have 20 plus titles for the album. We have 40 song ideas. We've had other people approach us about wanting to write or put their song in. And right. the chemistry between the three of us, we just don't have any any room. I mean, we'd have to put a 50 song album out. 
Well, the that, you know, well, that's a good idea. Well, you might, you know, turn it into a double CD. Well, not, uh, that's nothing you know, wrong with that. Well, we've got so many ideas. We just we 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 don't need any. Don't take this the wrong way, but any other input. Because right. we've got so many right. things that we haven't put together and that's, yet, and that's awesome. That's just, and you yeah. know what I like? It's all original. It's all original music. There is, there is, and I'm not going to mention the word cover because it's, you guys don't believe in that. There, yeah. it's all original, well, and every song that I've listened to is just totally awesome. Well, um, what we did is, you know, the three of us, we kind of all listen to different music when we're separate. And we're like, you know, this is great and all that, and we enjoy it. We want to put our own crayon in the box. And so when we get together, we have this groove. Tony's got these vocals, and we're like, we feel our music is as good as anybody's. And I tell you what, we play 25% of the United States, and people are receptive. They're always coming up about Tony, his lowness on the bass, Sean with his is Wade and percussion, me on the guitar, the backup vocals. Uh, we just, you know, we love what we do, and we feel that if we did other people's music, it would take away from what we do. Right. You know, I mean, you you wouldn't. And you right. Just, you know, you guys have to be yourselves, and you really you can get ideas from other people. It doesn't mean you have to right. use them. And, and we've, we've got enough material now that we don't. We don't need to fill anything in. We don't need to you fill know, in. And that's great. And I see you guys. You guys have got uh, three albums under your belt uh, right now, which is just totally awesome. And you're working on another one. And you've got probably enough material to do two more. Probably. Um, and, you know, and it's just great, you know. But you want, you can't rush it. You know, you can't rush a good thing. you got to uh, you got to get it, get it down right and make it come out right. And... You know, everybody's looking for that perfect album. Um, their, your last album, um, the, the 2015 release, is just totally awesome. Um, just a great album. Yeah, and we ever. decided to we decided to to throw some live stuff on there too. So uh, you know, we thought that people would like us live, and our live stuff is is a little bit different from the the studio stuff. It's not. I mean, you know, some of it's a little bit faster, some of it's a little bit different, but it's uh you know you get a little bit different dynamic with some of that live stuff than you do from the studio stuff and right you know, so it's it's not a different song it's the same song it's got the same you know so I listen to all, I listen to all the songs you played up in Columbus and there wasn't that much difference I mean yeah maybe there was a little difference in speed uh, but that's well, about I, it I mean everything was I mean it was just like it was on the album um, right. well I tell you what Lyle. We were playing up in Buffalo, New York, and uh, the place was packed. They had they had two pizzas for us, the size of pool tables. They were huge. They and were. we were playing My Stripper Girlfriend, and there was this girl literally <laughs> on stage right in front of me. She was dancing. I'm surprised she wasn't touching the strings, and they were yelling, and they loved us in New York, and we were just like, we were like, wow. So, And even when we went down to Dallas, you know, we had... We had people going nuts about the stuff we were doing. Yeah, my stripper girlfriend always seems to be the woman's favorite, and I—that's fine. I'm yeah, great. you know, that's, you got to have a song that everybody can get in on. And I'm going to stop right here. I got to talk to Sean because he's sitting back in the background, wondering when he's going to get a chance to talk. <laughs> All uh, right, Sean, uh, these guys—I mean—they come up with some great music. Do you? I mean, I'm going to talk to Tony and Mike. You can help me out on this. Does, does, does John's input on drums help you to develop a song? Uh, when he's awake. <laughs> but, he, hey, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sean. My bad. Yeah, I seem a little bit mellow, but once I'm behind the drums, it uh, definitely wakes me up. Well, man. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to, I mean, they're, I mean they're, they're writing the music. You've got a beat down, and you just you just start playing to it. I mean... It's like um, that's the kind of I mean that's the kind of thing drums are. You just create a beat and you follow it, and uh, you change it. You can change it here. You can change it there. Um, yeah, that's a good uh, thing about originals. You uh, put your I own stamp on it. I, I always love to watch drum players. It's so intense. Uh, 
power metal band. Um, you guys were up there uh, watching the sound of thunder. That drummer, he was just intense. John, I loved watching you play. Um, Thank you. And I can't wait to see you again sometime. Uh, we're going to get into another song right now. Take Down, um, I believe, is on the new album. Uh, Mike, would you tell me a little bit about that one? Uh, actually, that, that rift and takedown, uh, I had I had a guy who was real negative and a buddy, and he was very adamant when I would show him that rift that he didn't like it, so I knew I had something. And right. uh, when I presented the rift to the band, I mean, that song wrote itself like, bam, instantly. Oh, that yeah, that came together so quick. We it had that. really did. What you got to look at? Really Tony had the vocals like right there, and then uh, we got a video on YouTube where it's got Kung Fu fighting and it's got the chorus where it's got the words where you can right. see. And that song just came together, and Sean brought his magic in there, and we were just like, I mean, that's that's our fighting song, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? But you gotta love it when you get a song like that that just forms really quickly, and uh, it's gonna be a good feeling that you know. That uh, um, God, what's the word for it? You guys blend together so well. How, it was, you know it what was I'm magic. saying? It was magic. Yeah, it's, mag it's magic. Well, You're right. We had a, what did we have, Tony? We had a is it an MMA fighter or something that we had? Yeah, they, yeah, we had somebody that was interested in maybe using that, and I thought that'd be great for an MMA fighter entrance yeah, we, or wrestling. Or... Yeah, somebody was going to use it for their theme song, the fight. They actually came to a show. Uh, where was that in Ohio? Mansfield. 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 We was approached by a guy. He bought the CD. He had, he had heard us. He said his daughter was almost 18, that she was an MMA fighter. and he, yeah, She was an amateur MMA fighter and trying to get into the pros. And, yeah, and but we never heard anything back, so we don't know. But we did give our consent, so, you know, we don't know, you know, what happened with that. Okay. Definitely an angry song, though. <laughs> well, it's, it's you. It's, it's, Oh yeah, it's a great tune. We're gonna play it right now. This is Mernane Tribe. Mernane Tribe and Takedown on the Rock Asylum.